Hello. Hi, this is Craig Kreskis, and I am a partner technical architect here at Microsoft. And this is the third of a multi-part video series on how to integrate Dynamics 365 Business Central and Dynamics 365 Sales. If you watched the two previous sessions, I covered on how to create trial accounts. And then the second video was how to demonstrate the integration between sales and Business Central in both the role of the sales representative and the finance manager. Next, what I'm gonna focus on now are the details on how to configure that integration for your demo environments. So what I'll cover is the technical overview and also some of the key concepts that you should be familiar with. And then I'll go into the product, into Business Central, where I'll run the setup. Now the key concepts that it's important for you to understand is both the mapping, how do I match that data for the integration, coupling, synchronization, and then I'll need to address the conflict resolutions should I have any conflicts that arise. To provide a, maybe a, a larger, more macro view for you, you see here we have two services that we're integrating. On one side, we have Business Central, and on the right side, there is Dataverse. Now, both services store data in structured ways and within some security and or legal context. Business Central, on the left, stores it in tables within companies, whereas Dataverse stores it in entities that are owned by teams or users within a business unit. Both services also allow for extensibility, so you can easily add either new fields to existing tables or you can add custom tables in Business Central. You can add custom entities or custom attributes to entities in Dataverse as well. Now, to be able to customize and use the Dataverse entities in Business Central, we need to have a Business Central representation of the metadata in Dataverse. In Business Central platform, those tables are called AL proxy tables. So if you're a developer watching out there today, these are very similar to regular AL tables, just they have a, a table type attribute set to Dataverse. Now having a static copy of data structures are not enough and we need to somehow map the fields between the tables in Business Central and the entities in Dataverse. So here is where the integration table and field mappings will come in. They will drive how the synchronization process transfers data between those services. And then when the synchronization fails, for some reason uh, a conflict might occur, there's a synchronization process that uses the direction that you could set in the integration table uh, mappings to determine the direction of the transfer between data and between the services. And you can either make that unidirectional or bi-directional. So let's just get into the product. I'm gonna open up Business Central and I'll run the setup. To begin with, I will open up the setup and extensions and then I'll go into assisted setup. Now I've collapsed all of the main categories and then I want you to search for connect with other systems and you'll begin with setup Dataverse connection. Now Business Central is looking for Dataverse environments that are associated with the account that were signed in with Business Central. And then just follow the prompts on the wizard-based menu. I'll select next. Uh, you'll see here that it does recognize that I do have an environment. I'll have to sign in as my administrative user. Business Central, will ask for permission, so you'll need to consent on behalf of the organization to set up a few settings on behalf of the administrator. So make sure you select that, choose next or accept. Now that I'm signed in, I can progress into the setup wizard. This takes just a few moments to configure. 
Now, you'll see here a couple of things. First, the ownership model. This determines who can work with the data. Typically, you would leave this as team. Your other option would be to set up as individual. If you're more than one person, we typically would recommend the team model. Now, over on the below that, you'll see here complete setup without synchronization. So if you plan to perform a full synchronization for Dynamics 365 sales, you'll, you'll want to check and slide this to the right so that you have all the entities in there. In the current screenshot, with this turned off, I'm only going to synchronize, synchronize or sync the four base entities from Dataverse, and you'll see that on the next screen. Now, again, once I run the full synchronization of Dataverse and Dynamics 365 sales, I would bring in all of those entities. I'll select Next. This takes just a moment. And then I'm complete with the setup for Dataverse. Now, to see your actions, you can either select the Alt key with the letter Q, or up at the top where I've got it highlighted, you could do the search, and then you could type in connect to get connection for the Dataverse setup. You'll see here, I've got some items here in the integration solution settings and the advanced settings already configured for me. I'm gonna go ahead and test the connection, so I'll select connection, test it, and that looks good. Then under the synchronization, you'll select run the full synchronization. And here are those four base entities in Dataverse, as well as the direction. I'll sync all, and I'll select yes to continue. And again, this took me just a few moments. Now on the screen here, uh, you'll see once I refresh again, I had success. I wasn't quite sure, and I ran this on a number of different tenants for some reason. At the time of this recording, I was getting an error message on the currency, uh, but I didn't have any issues when I performed the demonstrations. So just a heads up on there. I wasn't quite sure, and I couldn't figure out how to troubleshoot that. Now, if I go over to Dynamics 365 Sales in the Sales Hub, you can see the data inside which came from Business Central. So I've got all of my, the customers that came over from that uh, account entity. So now that I've run that setup and did the test connection for Dataverse, let's go ahead and perform that for sales. So just above, it's still in the setup and extensions under the assisted setup as I want to connect with other systems by selecting Dynamics 365 Sales. Same thing, I just follow the wizard-based prompts just to streamline the experience. I'll sign in as my administrator. We already discussed the consent. I accept. I select on Finish. And the same thing, go ahead and select Search or Alt-Q. In this case, I typed in Dynamics 365 Sales. And I'm looking for the connection setup. Now, if you uh, if you remember back in the prior video in our demo, we talked about sales orders and quotes manually being coupled or created in Business Central. And again, this really falls down on the requirements of the customer. You'll notice here before I navigate away from this screen, this is where if you wanted to be automatically creating those documents, as I'm creating them in sales, you can slide this to the right. Again, in our previous demos, I have you manually creating those. Once I see them in sales, I create them in Business Central. Under connection, I'll test that connection again. Success is good. Then if I go under the synchronization and run the full sync, notice you see those four base entities that were successful and finished as well as the remaining entities that are now gonna be synchronized because I'm running the sync for Dynamics 365 sales. Once that's finished, and again, this took just a few minutes, uh, you can close that out. And then under the mapping menu, just to show you the integration table mappings, 
this is how the integration table mapping looks like in Business Central. So you can see again the name, the table, the direction. So while we provide these by default, if the requirements are different, you can, as an administrator, control the direction. And then here you see the integration table that it's headed towards as well as the field. Then under mapping, you see the fields. So to many of you, the field mapping page is probably is the most interesting. In the field mappings page, you can see on one side the fields from Business Central, such as, again, currency code address, address to, et cetera, and on the right side, what that integration field name is uh, representation of or the attributes from Dataverse as it's surfaced through the AL proxy tables. In the integration table, integration field mapping list, apart from setting a direction of integration, you could also set up the default uh, values or constant values. So that is, again, a short, condensed, focused on how you configure the integration between Dynamics 365 Business Central and Dynamics 365 Sales. I'll focus a little bit more on a deeper integration in another video. What I would recommend as next steps, the easiest and most impactful way in which you could learn about this integration is on docs.microsoft.com. In the search bar, just type in Dynamics 365 Sales, and you'll see here the options along with a whole host of links for you to do additional learnings on this experience. I want to thank you very much for participation and look for another video on Dynamics 365 very soon.